crystal clear day out here. I've got the hexacopter up, I don't know, three, four hundred feet, and it's powering this atmospheric electricity motor. Okay, so this video is going to just be some updates on my work with the Atmo motor, some of my atmospheric electricity research, some of the stuff I've been doing with this motor. Um, you'll see right away that I updated the motor. I went ahead and added some additional pieces here on the top. So there's some top bracing on this motor now. And before, you know, you get it all set up and you may turn it over and because of flex here in the edges, um, this center rotor sometimes will get off and scrape the blades. Um, all of that's fixed now. So check out uh, laserhacker.com for the latest STL files on this motor and you can see the updated parts. I also strengthened these uh, bottom support legs as well. There was a portion on this print that was um, had kind of a weak point here that could break. So um, in, in looking over this motor, I've realized that this motor is a really complex and expensive build. Even if you own a 3D printer, this is a real project and a half to try to tackle. So I'm starting a design for a very simple Atmo motor. It's going to be a simplified, scaled-down version of this that anybody can build very quickly, and it'll be a very simple 3D print. And uh, just I'm going to try to create it so it still has a fair amount of torque, but I just really want to shoot for simplicity in design, make something much easier to build. And if you don't have a 3D printer, follow along on my channel. Subscribe, follow along, because I've been contacted by the guys that create the Orion Delta 3D printer and they have graciously offered to have to host a giveaway on my YouTube channel for one of their Orion Delta 3D printers. So they're sending me a printer, I'm going to do a review on that printer, I'll go ahead and work on one of these motor projects with it, review the printer, and then we'll go ahead and based on user comments we'll have a phrase like enter me in the 3D printer giveaway in the comments at the end of a month I'll go through those comments and we'll choose one winner and we'll go ahead and, and do a giveaway on that printer so follow along that should be exciting I'm looking forward to giving back to the community and uh, seeing what folks out there will be doing with these 3D printers so okay so for this experiment I want to show you all charged water back there on the Vandegraaff I've got a bottle of water and I'm gonna charge that up on the Vandegraaff and then by just holding that uh, water bottle next to this uh, antenna I can actually run this motor. You'll see this motor spin right up off the charge that's uh, in the water. So I just want to show you that. Here we go. So this water is all charged up, and you want to be careful with water like this. I've shocked myself pretty good doing stuff like this, but watch as I bring this next to the uh, antenna. Look at that, folks. I just thought that was so interesting. And uh, it'll run the motor for quite a while, just holding the uh, water bottle here in the proximity of the antenna after charging it. So. I've really been having a lot of fun experimenting with this electrostatic stuff and uh, you know discoveries like this uh, you just kind of stumble upon them as you experiment so definitely a field worth experimenting in and you never know what you'll discover Okay, so I'm going to be testing the Atmo motor, the atmospheric electricity motor today. And today we've got crystal clear sky, so I'm interested to see if this motor will run on a clear day like this. Um, I have tried testing this motor on atmospheric electricity a couple times in the last couple weeks, and I've had really bad weather here. It's been really windy, freezing cold. I did try a kite on a clear day, but the uh, kite string would stretch at a different ratio than the copper wire and snap that. 
So today for this test, I'm using aluminum wire. It's lightweight, runs up easy. And um, instead of the balloon or the kite, I'm just using the hexacopter because it's so easy just to park it in the sky and do a hands-free test. Now I did have some concern in the comment section. Um, some of the YouTube commenters were saying that they thought the electrostatic, the electrostatic electricity was being created by the helicopter. So what I've done is I've actually run the um, helicopter here with a piece of uh, insulated line. This is actually just party balloon uh, plastic line coming down. And I've run, run it down a long ways from the helicopter to insulate it. And then I put my antenna, which is just a large uh, needle point antenna. And then I go into the wire. So with that um, configuration, I isolate the antenna pickup from the uh, helicopter. And that allows me to uh, make sure that I eliminate any of the possible electrostatic electricity generation off the helicopter itself. But yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we can get on a day like this. Okay, so it's a crystal clear day and I've got the atmospheric motor running on atmospheric electricity. You can see the sky is crystal clear. I had to run the helicopter up, oh, I don't know, three, 400 feet to get up to the atmospheric electricity to run this motor. But uh, it's working. It's a fairly large motor to be running on atmospheric electricity like this. Um, I'm going to experiment with putting a capacitor between the terminals and see if that increases the velocity. But you can see here I can stop the uh, motor and you can see it start back up under atmospheric electricity. Okay, so I've added a capacitor in line here and uh, it definitely does seem to be making an improvement on the uh, RPM of the motor. And I hear it picking up speed here as well. So very, very interesting. Okay, so I really enjoyed the torque test that Lidmotor did with his motor, and I decided to do a quick test here with mine. And I've got a, a C cell, this is a Duracell C-size battery, and that's my weight. And I'm just using the pulley that uh, I first printed with this motor. And I've got my needle here positioned 12 inches from the Van de Graaff um, terminal. So 12 inches out, so wireless 12 inches out and then to the motor and then the weight that will lift up. So let's give that a try here. I will flip on the Van de Graaff and we'll see if the, uh, let me see if I can get back here and frame all of this in one shot. But here we go, folks. So that's pretty cool. You can see that it's uh, really doing some stuff with that battery there. Okay, so that's the end of this torque test. But uh, as you can see, even at a foot from the Van de Graaff, uh, this thing has a fair amount of torque. So, so I'm going to print a pulley that will allow me to accurately uh, calculate off the radius of the pulley and the weight of the load, the horsepower of this motor. So that should be interesting, but uh, definitely a fun little uh, torque test. All right. <laughs>